What's going on guys, Mantafim here, back again with the third episode of my Rebuilding the Yellow Wall series on FM16. As you can see, on the left hand side, form has picked up, and we're now in 4th place. Only 7 points behind Bayern with a game in hand, which is the game we'll be playing today. So realistic, realistically, we can go ahead by a Leverkusen with a win and up to second um, before we go into today's game we should look at a few of the stats here Aubameyang obviously is our top goal scorer with 12 Gundogan with a 7.7 .7, our highest average rating Schmelzer and Correa with the most assists with 6 Vagel with the highest pass completion rate with um, 85% most per the matches as is Angel Correa, yellow card, Schmelzer, red card, Schmelzer. Um, fourth most amount of highest goals scored. Seventh best most, um, seventh best goals conceded. Thirteenth highest yellow cards, fifth highest red, and we have the highest average attendance, which I didn't realise till just now. Um, something I want to show you actually this little gem. If you follow him on Twitter you may have seen me tweet about him a few times but I just want to show you this. So this little guy here, and I say little guy because he's 5 foot 8, he has been absolutely amazing. Christian Pulisic, 17 year old American, he's actually made two first team caps so far um, for the USA. Valued at 2.8 million I've given him a 60 million, I think it is, release clause in his contract, earning 16.75k a week, but oh, his stats are amazing, They're all growing as well, first touch 16, but well, that's going up, three kicks 12, but that's going up, long shots 9, but that's going up, uh, termination 12, but that's going up, vision 15, but that's going up, and that is, that is very good, like, amazing pace 12 that's going up acceleration 15 but that's going up and his stats so far this season he started 12 games come off the bench for six scored five goals two assists three player of the matches and a 7.37 average rating 82 percent um pass completion rate and 56 percent uh, shots on target and 21 Dribbles completed, I think that is. I'm going to guess. Dribbles made, 21. Which isn't too bad. He's made most of his starts, well, eight starts, none of the bench in the Euro Cup. Which is, and he's played well in all of them um, starts. So three goals, one assist, three play of the matches. In the Bundesliga, he's started four, come off the bench for six, two goals, one assist, no play of the matches. But in his average rating, just under a seven. And in the Europa League, it's just under an 8. But altogether, oh, I'm happy with him. Like, I don't think I've ever put a 17-year-old in my team this often, this early in his career, as much as I have with Christian Pulisic. So hopefully, this player, we will see a lot of him in this save, in this series. And another player I want to show you guys as well is Felix Pasla. Uh, look how he's very versatile as you can see here anywhere on the left anywhere on the right in the middle as well but I usually play him as a wing back on a complete wing back role and he's got good stats as well There's most of them going up um, his termination is going down don't know why but 16 work rate which is good for a wing back anyway it's fair, fairly fast uh, first touch needs improving but that's going up long shots 11 which is not too bad 13 penalties as well not too bad but as you can see here seven starts four off the bench three goals for a wing back it's not too bad two assists he scored one penalty but it wasn't for us um one play of the match which was for us 50% shots on target, 80% passing completion rate and 28 tackles, 7.56 average rating 
in the Europa League, he started three, come off the bench for one, scored one goal, two assists, one player of the match. In the Bundesliga, he only started twice, come off the bench three times, one goal. To be fair with him, I've seen him about, he's been in and around the first team, and there came a, a point, a, yeah, came a time, sorry, where he was complaining about the lack of first team football. So I thought, why not just give him a go? And he hasn't disappointed. Not at all. As you can see, he is attacking fullback. But preferred move is to cut inside from the right wing. But he's right footed. Uh, but most of the goals have, has come from him cutting in from the right wing. Either him cutting in and getting a shot away, or him actually being in the box for a cross from the left hand side. So yeah, they're two players of good potential. Also, it's very good as well. But Paslak and Pelisic are two players I actually did not hear about at all before I started this save. Vagel I had a rough knowledge of and he does play pretty often. Um he's on a contract till twenty eighteen and only earning two hundred and seventy five thousand two hundred and seventy five pound a week with five bonuses. Let's have a look what they are. Is it a loyalty bonus, appearance fees, not too big a contract, um, let's just offer him a new one now. So he wants 6.7k a week, rotation, I am going to add in a release clause for, same as Pelusic, 60 million. Uh, and I cannot complain with the rest of that. Finalise that. And exit the talk. Anyway. I just want to get out of the way. Because I just, I'm just over the moon of them. Just absolutely over the moon. Some honourable mentions in here. Uh, Park Ju Ho hasn't played badly either when he's played. Castro, another player who has moaned about playtime. Isn't Centre midfield, but I've been playing him as a wing back with Pelisic. No, Pazlak, sorry. And you can see the wing back right can play there. And he's done fairly decent. Gundogan is injured, which is also off oh, one day. Um, anyone else that you wouldn't really expect to be? No, that is about it. When's Durm back? Because he's like our strongest full back. 5 to 11 days. Uh, that's about it. Anyway, previous fixtures. Let's have a look. So, since our last game, uh, the 3 3 draw against Bayern Munich, we then went to lose 3 2 to Besiktas in the Europa League. And I, I don't know why it's not coming up with who scored. Uh, it's weird. Anyway, let's see. Okay. So, where am I now? Mesquitas, 3-2 loss. With Pulisic. Why are just selecting multiple games at a time? That's probably why it wasn't working. Now, you fuck off as well. There we go. We lost 3-2 to Mesquitas. Mario Gomez scoring twice and Gokan Torre scoring for them. Christian Pulisic scored twice for us, earning a 9.0 average rating. Uh, yeah, it's all that's about that game. Her oh, go away, what's going on? Hertha, Berlin, we beat 2 1. The marker away penalty, which I think. Did you play in the Basquitas game? Oh. Piss off. Come off the bench. Uh Hair for Berlin I think was his yeah, look at his first start since injury, I think. I'm not too sure. I can't remember. Uh probably. But anyway, he scored and so did Bumiang and Vladimir Derida scored a consolation for them. We then in a nail bite encounter with Hanover Beating them um, 4-3. Charlison and Ben Sharp scored in the 5th minute. 
Marco Roy scored in the 16th minute. Aubameyang scored in the 17th minute with a swift reply. Andre Hoffman then scored on the, like, not far from home. Oh, fuck off, but just learn to get your words out. Hoffman scored in the 43rd minute, basically. And then Felix Paslak scored in the 78th minute. Shinji Kagawa made it 4-2 in the 83rd minute. And then Alan St. Max, Maxim, Maximin scored in the 88th. So yeah, that was a very intriguing game. As you can see, not very not Apart from Gundogan and Castro, not much high average ratings for a team that scored four goals, but we did concede three. Then we played Trilopis um, in the Europa League. Aubameyang scored in the seventh minute, and then again in the tenth. Pastak scored in the ninth. Schmelz scored on the stroke of half time, and one of their players scored in the seventy fourth minute. Mm, that's all I can say about that. Uh, that's when Gundogan got injured, as you can see there. Leverkusen was a 2-0 win at home. A bombing scoring twice pretty late on. And Karim Bellarabi got sent off. Actually, a little story about this game. I've probably said in previous episodes, in this series probably, I can't remember, but I know I've said it in the um, Super Saddle series, I am a tactical genius. Bellarabi got sent off, they were playing a 4-4-4-5-1 formation I think they were playing or 4-4-2 uh, yeah 4-4-2 formation they were playing Bellarabi got sent off and they then went to play three central midfielders so I then started playing wider and that's where our goals come from two crosses into Aubameyang so that was good and then we played Halle or Hall or a team in the German Cup which we should have won as you can see here, a very rotated side, but we lost 3-1. Aubameyang scored off the bench for us. At 2-1 down, we were looking to get back in the game, but they scored in the 76th minute, which kind of damaged us, and they just ran away with it. And then we played Schalke after that, a 0-0 draw, not much to say about that one. Then we played Trip Tripolis again in the Europa League, beating them 3-0. A booming scored, Park Ju Hull scored, and we had our own goal from a Zivkovic shot. And look at that, our attacker midfield three of Poli no, yes, our, our whole midfield, Polisic, Vagil, Zivkovic, and Gnabry all getting 9.0 ratings. So that says a lot about that game. But here we are today against Werder Bremen. Um. Nuri Sahin unregistered, yes, because he's still injured. Mkhitaryan, still injured. Gundogan, doubtful, he won't play. Eric Derm, doubtful, won't play. They've got Aaron Johansson playing, um, out with a sedan call. I doubt he's a threat, I've never heard of him in my life. But, anyway, let's have a look at how both teams line up. So, as usual, we'll start with the home team. And it's a pretty familiar lineup with Horn in net, Ginter, Hummel, Socrates in the back three, Schmelzer and Vega replaced with the injured Gundogan at the defensive midfield, and Castro on the right hand side. Kagawa, Royce, Correa all play behind Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang. On our bench we have Berkey, Park Juho, Gundogan, Zivkovic, Pasla, Gnabry and Pichet. Werder Bremen start with Vaderwald in net, Garcia, number three, Vestergaard, Fritz, Levin, Parkfred, Zinuzovic, Bartels, Ujar, and Claudio Pizarro. On the bench they have Wolf, Gebre Selassie, Grilich, Lorenzen, Yatabare, Galvez, and Velkovic. As you can see, I butchered a lot of those names. I might just go by their shirt numbers for this game. Anyway, Lego. <laughs>
kick here for Werder Bremen is short to the centre back. If Bremen's number seven for some reason, number three has it now. It's give it to number eleven. I want to Garcia in the middle, but Socrates does intercept it, play it to Royce. He gives it to Correa out wide. Surely he'll cut in eventually. It's what he's meant to be doing, but he's not. Inside to Vega plays a one-two, but it's cut out. Up to striker and back a long ball there, but I'm sure Hamas will get there. He does. Castro, Vega out wide. What's he going to do with it? Where is he going? Inside to Correa. Switch it to Schmelzer. Does he get there? He does. Go on, Schmelzer. Ah, it's a block out for a corner. No one gets on the end of it. It comes out to Royce. You go back to Correa. Try again. Back to Royce again. Kagawa. Ooh. Good save that was. Another corner. Royce to whip it in this time. Just another corner by the looks of that. Yep. Royce again. Swinging it out. Oh, come on. Another corner. On the other side. Correa goes on to take it. Gonna whip it in this time. Another corner? Fucking hell. Royce, to whip it out. That is not what I meant, you dirty minded people. Oh, that was the wrong word, but anyway. Another corner, which Royce will take again. Nope, we'll go to the next highlight. Castro will throw in here, right by our corner flag. Vagel gets the ball off him. Kagawa here in acres of space, which is now closed down. Royce here in acres of space. Correa. What can you do? Kagawa? I can see Abuming's run. Kagawa can see as well. Abuming is throwing goal. But at number seven, the centre back. Caught up with him. Oh, should have been 1 0 that. Anyway, next highlight. Royce whipping his free kick. Make it count. They usually never do come to anything. This one doesn't. But Vagel gets a loose ball. Royce can switch it to Socrates. Socrates can find Castro. Castro can find a booming at the back post. A booming can find the back of the net. No, he cannot. So as you can see at half time, still nil nil. And I've told him aggressively, I'm far from a, I'm far from Peter what I've just oh, Let me try again. I've told them aggressively that I'm far from pleased with what I've just saw. And they reacted quite well. So it does work. I'm a bit harsh. A nil nil draw against a big club. But, if I show you the stats, you'll be wondering why. At half time, we've had 10 shots to their none. 6 on target to their none. 2 off target to their none. 2 clear cut chances to their none. 64% possession, they've had 36. So I've hardly even seen the ball. 11 corners to their one, as you've seen. And they've committed seven fouls to our one. Only completed 64% possession, while we've completed 80%. We've won more tackles. They've won more headers. They've had two yellows, no reds. And the average ratings are pretty equal there. But based on the stats, we should be winning. Should be. But what I'm going to do... Is... I just have a quick look at everything. So for them, their keeper saved six shots. Uh, they've had a decent game. Their two centre backs have made 11 interceptions each, and they've got quite a lot of runners. Socrates has made nine interceptions. Correa hasn't um, completed one cross yet. Five key passes from Kigawa. 75% shots on target for Aubameyang, but he's really still putting them in the back of the net. And Marco Royce hasn't completed a single cross either. Do I want to put on Gnabry? Not yet. We'll start the second half. Keep it how it is. Yeah, so this video's already gone on longer than it should have. So, basically... Take your man on. Take your man on. Get a cross in then. Aubameyang's in there. He finds him. He scored. Pay him up Aubameyang. Onside. He's onside. 13th goal of the season, we finally break the deadlock and move up to second place. Oh, another corner. Royce whips it in. No one gets on the end of that again. Zivkovic though will get the loose ball. What will he do with it? He'll give it to Ginter. He'll give it to Royce. 
It will give it to Gnabry. He will put it the back of the net. He won't. Aubameyang will though. Makes it 2-0. Player Emmerich Aubameyang. 14th goal this season. Royce to the corner again. I doubt we'll score. We don't. It's cleared. Royce to get the loose ball. He takes on his man. He gets past his man. Can we put another cross in? He can. Aubameyang there. For the hat-trick. He's gone and scored a hat-trick. Well, that was unexpected. But it's there. And that's 3-0. Now the game is surely done. And that is full time. Well done, lads. So we now have Locomotive Moscow in the Europa League. Which we've pretty much already qualified for. It's not official yet, but I'm sure he wants to put Darm Darmastat in the league. In the goal stat in the league. Beskitas again. Stuttgart, Augsburg, Köln, and Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, been on big down here. Wolfsburg, uh, Hamburg, Frankfurt, Bayern. Nah, Borussia Mönchengladbach will be the next game. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give it a thumbs up, share it if you want to. And as usual, I've been Romano, and as usual, you've been awesome. Good bye.